Hey guys, welcome to another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench brought to you by Highline Guitars. If you like building or repairing electric guitars, I encourage you to tap that subscribe button down below. And if you do, I'll take your luthier skills to a whole new level. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about the next guitar building project. I just finished the steampunk guitar last week. And so what I want to do is move on to the next guitar building project. Now the steampunk guitar is what I would call a thematic design uh, based on a theme, the steampunk theme. And I do theme type guitars every once in a while, but it's not something that I typically uh, do on a regular basis. And that's simply because I always fear that if I were to build nothing but theme guitars, that's what people would know me for. And that's really not where I want to go with my guitar building business. Theme guitars are fun to build and can be a challenge, but they're sort of gimmicky. And I think they're really more wall art than they are anything else. Although the steampunk guitar plays fantastic. With that in mind, in this episode, I'm going to talk about the next guitar build, and I'm going to kind of introduce you to the design that I've come up with and show you some of the woods that I plan to use for the, the build. And what I'm going to do is bring you in close and let you take a look at this design that I've come up with for this guitar. Also, uh, if you stay tuned to the end of this video, I'll post a link to a playlist for this next guitar building series, just like I did with the steampunk guitar build. That way you can go back and watch each episode as they get completed during the process of building the guitar. And throughout this episode, I'll try to throw in some tips and tricks and things that I like to do as I build guitars. So stay tuned for that. So let's jump in and get started. So this is the design that I've come up with for the next project, and it's based on my Echo Double Cutaway guitar. And I've done some very minor tweaks to the original Echo shape that I came up with a couple of years ago. I've moved the neck pickup a little bit closer to the bridge pickup, and I've shortened the length of the heel, or how deep it extends into the body. And the reason I did that is because I want the uh, end of the fretboard to slightly overhang the end of the neck heel. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, if by chance there was any sort of a gap between the heel and the body, the overhanging fretboard would cover that. Now with a CNC guitar, that's really not an issue. And it wouldn't probably be an issue with the guitar that I'm going to build. However, if you're building guitars by hand, that is a, a trick and a way that you can cover up a potential gap. But by increasing the area between the pickup and the neck pocket, what I can do is I can install the pickups using traditional humbucker pickup rings. Or if I want to, I can just direct mount the pickups. So I have that option with this particular design. The other... Uh, modification that I've made is with respect to the bevel that goes all the way around the perimeter. I've done bevels before and I like this uh, straight kind of, well not straight but it's an angle bevel but with a hard edge. I just think that looks more modern and I may give it a very slight round over just for comfort but in the past like I said I, I would do the bevel but it was usually only um, on the top portion of the body and or the top edge portion of the body so this time I've made it wrap all the way around the top of the body including these comfort uh, cutouts here in the upper and lower horn just to make it easy to access those frets at the end of the fretboard and on the back I have you know the belly relief design but it just sort of gradually transforms into a vertical uh, sides. And then I added the bevel at the front, which is a little bit more extreme. And what that does is it allows nice access to those upper frets. And again, you can see where that sharp edge is between the, the two pieces of you know, where the, 
the scallop meets the area under the heel, and that will be slightly rounded over just for uh, added comfort. And what I plan to do is build this guitar from three different pieces of wood. I'm going to use, I'm planning to use mahogany for this back portion, and that's about one and a quarter inches thick. Then on top of that, I'm going to laminate a piece of walnut, which is about an eighth of an inch thick. And then on top of that, I'll add a book matched flame maple top that's three eighths of an inch thick. So when that bevel's cut, it's going to reveal all three woods from the front, which I think will look really nice. I've had several viewers ask me if I have a Patreon account where they can send money to show support for my YouTube channel. I don't. However, what I do have is a website where you can purchase plans for electric guitars as well as many of the tools that I use to make guitars. It's called eGuitarPlans.com and I'll put a link down in the description below. Think of it as a way to show me support while getting something in return. Now let's get back to the video. Now I haven't totally decided on mahogany yet. I have the maple and the walnut, which I'll show you in a minute, but I don't have the mahogany yet. I have to run to my lumber supplier and see what they've got in stock. And so it's likely going to be mahogany, but that's something I always kind of leave up and you know to chance because once I get to the to the lumber yard, I may find something a little more interesting. Who knows? I have no idea what they've got in stock. So, Oftentimes, the design of my guitars is driven by what cool woods I can uh, discover at my local lumber supplier. So that's what the design of the body is going to be. The neck is going to be my uh, standard. Um, it's it's going to be a, a one-piece maple neck with a 10-degree angled headstock, and it's the same basic neck design that I've used on all my other guitars. The only difference is that I did shorten the heel so that I could have that fretboard overhang. And then for a fretboard wood, I'm I'm not sh entirely sure yet. I've got some uh, Chechen, which is a South American wood that is very similar to rosewood, and I've got some Bacote and a few other I think I've got some purple heart and a few other kinds of wood. So I've got to just take a look at what I've got and what I think would look the best with this guitar. And for a finish, I think what I'll probably do, uh, at least what I'm thinking right now, is I want to create a faux oil finish uh, using water-based products. And I've talked about this before in other videos, but I'm going to demonstrate it from start to finish in this series. So let's go out and check the check out the wood that I've picked out so far for this build. Okay, so this is the wood that I've selected so far for the body. I still have to buy the back of the body and maybe next week we'll head over to the lumber yard and take a look at what they have as far as mahogany or maybe some limba or whatever. But what I'll be using for the fretboard is this piece of Chechen which I hear it referred to as Chechen rosewood it's not a true rosewood, but it has the same Janka hardness as most of your you know, East Indian rosewoods. It has a very smooth, very dense texture. It um, is a very hard wood, and when you slot it, it holds the frets really well. And then when you put uh, a little bit of oil on it, it looks fantastic. It has nice color, nice grain. I love this wood for fretboards. Plus, I don't have to deal with the restrictions involved with uh, East Indian rosewood and the true rosewoods. Then for the neck itself, I'm going to be using this slab of, this is Eastern Rock Maple. Now, as you know, guitar builders have a choice of maple from the Pacific and maple from the East Coast, and as well as Canada. And the Pacific maples, they're, it's a big leaf maple, and those uh, types of maple are a little bit softer. And that's also where you get all your figured woods, your figured maples, your flamed, your quilted. That typically comes from Pacific maple. 
but the uh, eastern, what they, they call it eastern rock maple, this stuff is extremely hard and it makes outstanding necks. Furthermore, really isn't necessary to purchase quarter sawn wood for your neck if you're using eastern rock maple. It's that stable. A quarter sawn simply means that when you look at the end, the grain is running straight up and down. And that will typically make for a neck wood which is less prone to bowing and, and warping and twisting and that sort of thing. It's, it's, much, it's much stiffer and it resists the, the pull of string tension once you've strung up the guitar. However, that's really, I found in my experience, more of an issue with woods like mahogany or uh, limba, you know, any of the, the exotic woods that are not quite as, as stiff and hard as an eastern rock maple is. So I typically, with all my guitars, I love to use the, the eastern rock maple. It's just, it makes a fantastic neck. Now, I do have woods, uh, two of woods selected for the body. I have a slab of walnut. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cut off a couple of thin slices and plane it, or probably run it through my drum sander, and thin it uh, down to about an eighth of an inch thick. Those uh, pieces will then be book matched together, although it won't matter because it'll be laminated to the top of the wood that I'm going to select for the back of the body. Then for the top, I'm going to use, this is a nice piece of that Pacific flamed maple, and I will resaw it and run it through my sander and get it to a thickness of about three-eighths of an inch. So with the bookmatch top, the uh, walnut that will be sandwiched between the maple and the mahogany, I'll have an overall thickness of about one and three-quarter inches. So that's the wood so far. And I still need to run out to the lumber yard and pick out some wood for the back of the body. And what I'll do is I'll take you along with me, but that'll probably be in next week's episode. So that's it for this week's episode. Take care and we will see you soon.